Hi everyone, my name is Reza. I'm a PhD researcher at the Technical University of Munich in Germany. And today I'm going to present our paper, Kernel Normalized Convolutional Networks for Privacy Preserving Machine Learning. We know that deep neural networks rely on large data sets to train the model effectively. However, it is very difficult to procure such large data sets in a centralized manner. Why? Because we cannot transfer the private data of the institutions to a centralized location. We refer to this challenge as data availability and governance. Another challenge is privacy. If we train a model on a private data set, the privacy sensitive information can be leaked through the model training process. Federated learning addresses the data availability and governance challenge. It enables multiple clients, such as institutions, to collaboratively train a global model under the coordination of a central server without sharing their private data. Federated learning, however, does not tackle the privacy issue. We can still have privacy leakage in federated learning. Moreover, Federated learning poses new problems in terms of accuracy and network communication. Differential privacy addresses the privacy issue. It injects random noise into the clipped gradients of a DNN model to limit the information learned about a particular sample in the, the particular sample in the data set. Differential privacy, however, presents accuracy challenge. In federated learning, the clients can also employ differential privacy to cope with the privacy leakage. We call this environment as a differentially private federated learning or DPFL. Privacy, accuracy, and network communication have been studied in the literature extensively. Normalization, which is fundamental to train DNS and directly impacts privacy, accuracy, and communication is still understudied in the context of FL, DP, and DPFL. As you can see in the table, the previous studies made performance comparisons among uh, different normalization layers. However, they did not consider non-normalized model or no norm as baselines in the first place. In other words, they did not show whether we have performance gain in privacy-related domains if we use normalization. Moreover, in terms of environment, DPFL is missing from the experiments. Finally, the original kernel norm paper conducted very limited experiments. Uh, one case a study in FL and one case a study in DP to do the performance comparison. So we repeat, normalization is understudied in the context of privacy related domains. Let me give you an overview of the well-known normalization layers. Normalization layers differ from each other in, in dimensions on which they perform normalization. Batch norm considers the batch dimension during normalization. So batch norm is not batch independent. Layer norm and group norm are batch independent because they do not include the batch dimension during normalization. Batch norm, layer norm, and group norm include all elements in the height and width dimensions during normalization. So they are global normalization layers. Batch norm, layer norm, and group norm also require shift and scale as learnable parameters. Because batch norm is not batch independent, it is unsuitable for federated learning. It is also inapplicable to DP and DPFL. Group norm and layer norm are batch independent, so we can use them in FL, DP, and DPFL. Kernel normalization. Kernel norm is a recently proposed normalization method by us in a separate paper. Kernel normalization, first of all, is batch independent. 
it does not use batch dimension during normalization. Moreover, it is a local uh, normalization layer. Why? Because it uses a subset of elements from the height and width dimension during normalization. Using this, kernel norm can benefit from the spatial correlation among the elements during normalization. Kernel norm does not have any learnable parameters. In simple words, kernel norm is similar to pooling layers with two exceptions. First, kernel norm normalize the elements specified by the kernel window instead of computing the maximum or average of the elements. Second, kernel norm operates on all channels instead of a single channel. Kernel normalized convolutional network, uh, convolutional layer, K and con, is a combination of a kernel norm layer and, uh, and convolutional layers into one. Similarly, kernel normalized convolutional networks or K and con nets use kernel norm and K and con as main building blocks. They are free of batch norm layers and batch independent, so we can use them in privacy related domains. In our work, we raise two major research questions. First, do existing normalization layers such as layer norm, group norm, and kernel norm deliver higher performance than no norm in FLDP and DPFL similar to centralized training? In other words, do we have performance gain if we use normalization in privacy related domains? Second, does kernel norm delivers higher performance than other normalization layers in the privacy related domains similar to centralized training? We conducted extensive experiments to answer those questions. Based on our experimental results, no norm slightly outperforms layer norm and group norm using shallow models in federated learning and differential privacy. Moreover, kernel norm achieves significantly higher performance than no norm, layer norm, and group norm in all considered cases. Therefore, kernel norm is the best normalization layer for privacy related domains. Based on our findings, we also propose a kernel norm based ResNet architecture, we call it KN ResNet 13, for differentially private training. Using our proposed KN ResNet 13, we provide new state of the art accuracy values on the CFART and ImageNet dataset when we train the model from scratch using differential privacy. We use CFAR 10 and CFAR 100 as our low resolution and ImageNet as our medium resolution datasets. We also use VGG6 and ResNet 8 as our shallow models and DenseNet 20 and Preact ResNet 18 as our deeper models. We conducted the experiments in cross-silo and cross-device federated learning, differential privacy, and differentially private federated learning environments. In cross-silo FL, we have 10 clients, and all 10 clients are selected to participate in training in each communication round. In cross-device federated learning, we have 100 clients, and a fraction of the clients uh, in our case, 20 clients are randomly selected to participate in training. The label distribution across the clients is non-IID in federated learning. We also perform parameter tuning using different values for the learning rate and clipping. Federated learning accuracy results. As you can see in the table, no norm, a slightly outperforms layer norm and group norm using shallow VGG6 model in cross-silo federated learning. Moreover, kernel norm significantly outperforms the competitors in terms of accuracy 
in both cross device and cross silo federated learning and using both shallow VGG6 and deeper Preact ResNet 18 models. Federated learning communication efficiency results. No norm, uh, the orange curve, a slightly, uh, provides a slightly higher communication efficiency than layer norm and group norm. Kernel norm, the red curve, significantly improves the communication efficiency compared to no norm, layer norm, and group norm. Differential privacy accuracy results. In differential privacy setting, no norm uh, uh, provides higher accuracy than layer norm and group norm using shallow ResNet 8 model. Kernel norm outperforms the competitors in terms of accuracy in, uh, in DP using both shallow models and deeper models. Differential privacy convergence rate results. Non-normalized models show a slower convergence rate than normalized models. Kernel norm-based models, moreover, uh, converge much faster than the no-norm, layer norm, and group norm-based models. Differentially private federated learning results. No normalization provides a lower accuracy and communication efficiency in DPFL settings. Kernel norm significantly outperforms the, the competitors in terms of both accuracy and also communication efficiency in DPFL settings. Here are our key findings. First of all, no norm slightly outperforms the group norm and layer norm using shallow models in cross silo federated learning and differential privacy. Kernel norm provides much higher accuracy and communication efficiency or convergence rate compared to no normalization, group normalization, and no layer normalization in all considered cases. Therefore, kernel norm is the best normalization layer for privacy-related domains. Now the question is, why does kernel norm work great for FL, DP, and DPFL? The answer is, first, kernel norm is batch independent. Second, kernel norm does not have any learnable parameters. It means Kernel norm does not suffer from additional parameter aggregation in federated learning or additional injected noise in differential privacy and differentially private federated learning. Third, kernel norm is a local normalization layer, which considers a spatial correlation among elements during normalization. The second question is, are existing architectures a good fit for kernel norm? The answer is not necessarily. Although kernel norm works well with existing architectures. For example, in ResNet architectures, we have one times one convolutional layers and convolutional shortcuts. Kernel norm cannot benefit from a spatial correlation among the elements if we use one times one kernel sizes. The shortcut convolution, moreover, required more trainable parameters, which is not good for privacy-related domains. Therefore, we need to design architectures that are best book for kernel normalization. We propose KN ResNet 13. KN ResNet 13 contains two types of blocks, residual blocks and transitional blocks. Each residual block has two KN Conv layers with three times three kernel size. Transitional block uses max pooling to downsample the input tensor. To increase the number of filters, we use uh, a single uh, three times three KN Conv layer. This way, we require fewer parameters than 
convolutional shortcuts in original ResNet, which uses two convolutional layers. Now we compare KN ResNet 13 with uh, SOTA architectures on different data sets. As you can see on CIFAR 10, KN ResNet 13 provides SOTA new SOTA accuracy values for epsilon of A, 6, and 4. Similarly, on ImageNet with epsilon of 7, KN ResNet 13 provides a new SOTA accuracy value. We also compare KN ResNet 13 to wide ResNet on CIFAR 10 with augmentation multiplicity. As you can see in the table, uh, KN ResNet 13 outperforms both wide ResNet 16 and wide ResNet 40 uh, with epsilon values of 2, 4, and 6. In conclusion, in this paper, we conducted extensive experiments to compare the performance of different normalization layers and no normalization in FL, DP, and DPFL environments. We also proposed KN ResNet 13, an architecture best book for kernel normalization. Using KN ResNet 13, we provided new SOTA accuracy values on CIFAR 10 and ImageNet in DP. In summary, we showed the great potential of kernel normalization to become the standard normalization layer for privacy enhancing or privacy preserving machine learning. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us through email. Thank you very much for your attention.